Hey, how are you? My name is Nick, Nick DiGilio. I think you know that already. If you don't, that's my name. Um, I host two podcasts with the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. The first one is called Nick D Podcast. It is an entertainment, pop culture, movie review, book review, film review, song review, TV review, all that stuff. Very, very funny, very, very entertaining with great guests and regular subjects and stuff like that. You can check that out every Tuesday and Friday. Brand new episodes at RadioMisfits.com and on every platform where you get your podcast. Just Google the Nick D Podcast. It'll pop up everywhere. It is free. Subscribe today. I also host a second podcast, which is all about Saturday Night Live, and it's called That Show Hasn't Been Funny in Years, an SNL podcast. Every Wednesday, brand new episodes of that podcast pop up at RadioMisfits.com. Again, everywhere else. Hey, this week's episode, by the way, episode number 25 of the Saturday Night Live podcast I host, features the great, the legendary, the amazing character actor, Stephen Tobolowski. You know him as Needle Nose Ned from Groundhog Day. He was in Thelma and Louise. He was in Sneakers. He was in Single White Female. He was in Spaceballs. On TV, you saw him in Glee and the Goldbergs. Um, uh, everything. The guy's done like 8 million movies and TV shows. He's an incredible storyteller, an incredible guy. He's got a couple of books out. He hosts a podcast. One of my favorite people in the world. And he has worked with over 30 SNL cast members. And he's got amazing stories about working with those people. And that's all on the current Saturday Night Live podcast that I host. That show hasn't been funny in years. Episode 25 with Stephen Tobolowsky. And there are 24 other extraordinary episodes that you should check out. So along with the Nick D podcast, you should check that podcast out. They're all available everywhere. Radiomisfits.com. And we stream live 24-7. Radiomisfits.live. So check out my podcast. I also appear on the Steve Cochran Show. I am the official movie critic for WLS AM 890. Uh, and you can hear me on Fridays on the Steve Cochran Show and on WLSAM 890. You can watch these videos where I provide entertainment and reviews and all kinds of stuff. And everything that I do from the podcast to the radio to the videos, it's all free, which means you need to donate right now to my Patreon page to help things keep going. I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff, but I want to entertain you and inform you and give you reviews and help you to pick the entertainment that you would like to watch or see or consume. So, little bunny back would be nice. You would be one of the cool kids if you did it. So go to radiomisfits.com, well, to listen to my podcast. I got my plugs all fucked up. It's, it's actually, go to patreon.com slash nickdshow. Patreon.com slash nickdshow. Pick a tier, five bucks, six bucks, 25 bucks a month, whatever you want to do. Throw some money my way. I'd appreciate it. So give money now at patreon.com slash nickdshow. Okay. So a new documentary uh, debuted last night on uh, HBO and streaming on Max. You know Max. that used to be HBO Max. But then they cut out the HBO, and now it's just Max, and now you can see Guy Fieri eating shit, stuffing his fat, tattooed face. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's the only thing that they've added. Uh, that I'm just narrowing it down. This is how fucking jerky I am. Um, I've taken all the stuff that they'd offered from Discovery and all the other channels that are now part of Max, and I just basically said, you get what was on HBO Max, plus Guy Fieri stuffing his face with fucking pizza. That's what it is. Anyway, so it's on Max as well. And it's a new documentary, and it's called Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed. Uh, and it debuted last night. Um, and it is directed by uh, Stephen uh, Kajic, Stephen Kajic, who is a documentary filmmaker, um, who also directed music things and things like that. Very good documentary filmmaker. And this is a, 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 a based on a book, uh, the biography of Rock Hudson, called All That Element, uh, Heaven Allowed, which is a a variation on the title of a Douglas Sirk movie that he starred in. And it's all about Rock Hudson, um, and it's a fascinating story, obviously, um, and a great Hollywood story and an aggravating and irritating uh, uh, story about what gay actors and actresses had to go through during the Hollywood system of the 50s and the 60s and even into the 70s and 80s and 90s, um, and how you had to be closeted. And the, and the story that Rock Hudson, what he went through as an actor, what he went through as a gay man, what he went through as a performer... Um, is fascinating and complicated. And also, leading up to how he died, he died of AIDS in the 80s when people were still uh, didn't understand the disease, didn't understand what it was all about. Um, and at the time, uh, when, the, when the Reagan administration refused to even acknowledge that it, it existed because it was associated mostly with homosexuals at the time, and, you know, God forbid Reagan mentioned anything that had to do with, you know, homosexuals, uh, and that, that millions of people died, and tons of people died that shouldn't have died because nothing was done about this disease because it was, oh, it's only in the gay community, so who cares? Rock Hudson was one of the first big stars to, uh, to, to contract the disease 
And then on his deathbed, uh, he was outed and said that he did have AIDS. No, he wasn't outed. He did actually. He never outed himself. But he did have AIDS, and it became. And he became the face of what could happen. And actually, post his death was one of the big reasons why attention was brought to AIDS finally after a bunch of years of Reagan fucking ignoring it and not doing anything about it. And he became like the face and the voice and with the help of people like Elizabeth Taylor, um, his death became like a, 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 at ground zero of shouting into bullhorns and getting the, the attention that this disease you know, should have gotten, but didn't because of the Reagan administration and and because of, uh, you know, people, because of stereotypes and hate and all that stuff. So Rock Hudson became uh, a voice for AIDS research. Um, and, you know, he, his death helped raise millions and millions of dollars and really, um, you know, learn what people learned more about HIV and AIDS and everything that went with it. Um, so his life is fascinating. And this movie, this documentary that debuted last night on, on, on HBO Max, is great. It's an extraordinary documentary. It's beautifully done. Um, it is a, a, a great examination of his, of his career, how he started as just a hick from Winnetka, Illinois, right here, who was always uh, gay, and uh, how his agent, who was also gay, took him under his wing, changed his name to Rock Hudson, and formed him into a straight beefcake, you know, uh, straight actor, who in the 50s, you couldn't be gay. There was no way you could be gay. And this movie is about how he had to go through this terrain of, uh, you know, puritanical thoughts where you could not possibly be gay to the point where they had to fake a marriage. He got married, even though he was gay. And he hated hiding his lifestyle, which, uh, you know... The, the, the tabloids of the 50s and 60s were even worse than the tabloids are now, um, would attack them. And this was during the McCarthy era where, you know, uh, they would go after anybody who, who, who led any kind of alternative lifestyle, especially uh, homosexuals who were just ripped apart uh, by these tabloids and by the government and everything. And Rock Hudson, who became like one of the most celebrated and sexiest and loved leading men, straight leading men of all time, who had tons of leading ladies in his movies. He made a lot of romantic movies, straight romantic movies. He was loved by women and he was adored by men. Men wanted to be like him because he was straight and masculine and he got all the girls and the women loved him and fawned over him. Meanwhile, he was gay and he led a gay lifestyle and he had a lot of boyfriends and he had a lot of flings and he had a lot of relationships. He lived uh, a, a, an openly gay lifestyle but not in the world of Hollywood where he had to hide into a closet to the point where he actually had to marry a woman in order to keep this facade going because otherwise he wouldn't have a career. Um, and the movie dives deep, this documentary dives deep into that. It talks with people who were his friends, his former lovers, people he had flings with. Um, it captures the time period perfectly. And one of the other great things that it does is it takes clips from his movies that now have a completely different meaning, clips from great films and great TV shows where the dialogue or the scenes kind of reflect him hiding in a closet, pretending to be something he isn't, denying the fact that he's gay. All of these clips that, that they show from dozens of films over the years that he made in TV shows that reflect what was happening in his real life. Just coincidentally, he was making movies that were about those kind of themes and watching all these clips as they tell the story in this, in this documentary is fascinating and revealing. And when you watch these movies, you go back and watch them and go, oh my God, this movie is about him being gay. Or, oh my God, this scene is about hiding who you really are. Um, there were movies about like him pretending to be married and him pretending to be gay and all of these things that you now watch these clips and go, oh my God, this was him exercising these demons or working out his personality with great directors and great writers and interesting actors and actresses who knew he was gay. Everybody did. Everybody in Hollywood knew it. The leading ladies that work with him from Piper Laurie, uh, to Dorothy Lamar, to all of these women that had worked with him, everybody, makeup people, heads of studios, everyone knew Rock Hudson was gay, but the audiences couldn't know. The public could not know. His career would be over. So the movie is about the struggle of being a closeted gay actor in a time when you couldn't do that, and about the movies he made, the career, the choices he made, and then how controversial it got late in his career when he, uh, in the 80s, was diagnosed with AIDS, uh, was working on Dynasty, and I don't know if you remember this or not, maybe you're not old enough to remember this, but there was a very 
uh, controversial moment where uh, nobody knew anything about AIDS. Everybody didn't know how it was spread. Could you kiss somebody? Could you breathe on somebody? Could you be in the same room with them? Would you get AIDS? And AIDS was a gay disease at that time that only homosexuals got. So it was like completely dismissed uh, by the puritanical right-wing uh, uh, Reagan administration who refused to even do anything about it because they didn't care. It was only gay people were getting sick, so fuck it, we don't care. To the point where Rock Hudson kisses uh, Linda Evans in an episode of um, Dynasty, and after his death, it became like, after he got AIDS, it became like, oh my God, she might be sick. People wouldn't work with Linda Evans anymore because they thought she had AIDS. It was at this time when everybody was ignorant to what was really happening with this, this, this disease, and then, at one point, when he was sick and then when he died, Rock Hudson became the voice and the picture of what AIDS is and how it needs to be changed. Um, and this movie covers all of it. It covers his, his childhood here in Winnetka, in, you know, right outside of Chicago. And it covers all the movies he did, the people he worked with. It's got interviews from past and present and clips. It's a great documentary that is um, very thorough that is a great portrait of what it was like to be a gay closeted artist in those days and re been bringing those days back full circle. Uh, it's a great tribute to him as an actor, how, how underrated he was, how smart he was, and how he manipulated and played with his real life, his closeted life, with the image that he had and how smart and clever he was in doing that. The great work that he did all of those years from the late 40s all the way through to the 80s in movies and in TV, from TV shows like Macmillan Wife and to all the movies that he did with like Douglas Sirk and some of the other great stuff that he did. Um, his image, how it was played with by, by agents and by managers and by the press and how he survived living in the closet but also having a lot of flings and a lot of love affairs with other gay men and embracing the gay lifestyle. They talk about him going to like uh, gay clubs and uh, one place called the Glory Holes that he particularly enjoyed. Um, so, I mean, he lived it. He loved it. He loved being a gay man. Unfortunately, he couldn't share that love or that lifestyle with anybody outside of a small group of friends who he stayed close with, close with throughout his entire life. And a lot of those people are interviewed in the movie and some of the leading ladies interviewed. It is a great portrait of Hollywood at a specific time. It is all-encompassing. It is also very inspirational. And I cried. I was a big fan of Rock Hudson and uh, particularly the work that he did with Douglas Sirk, which I'm going to jump into right now. But I can't recommend this highly enough. If you are a fan of old school Hollywood, if you want to learn something that maybe you didn't know about Rock Hudson, the film career that he had, the TV career that he had, or about Hollywood in general, you want to get a lesson in history, watch this movie. It's streaming on, uh, it's, it's being broadcast on HBO and it's streaming on Max. I think you can find it on Hulu as well. But it's called Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed. And again, the title of this movie is uh, a twist on a movie that he made with Douglas Sirk. Which brings me to Douglas Sirk. And one of the things that I want people to do after they watch this movie, and I think that they will do, is that there is a good portion of this movie that justifiably is dedicated to the work that Rock Hudson did with an astonishing, great filmmaker uh, named Douglas Sirk, a German filmmaker named Douglas Sirk, who filtered the American uh, dream and the romantic, melodramatic visions of what it's supposed to be to be an American in a straight romance and everything that you're supposed to love about, you know, the world and the country and the beauty of it and having a family and all the soap opera melodramatic stuff that you would see. Well, Douglas Sirk sifted that through his very incredibly beautiful visual mind and his German upbringing and his cynical look at what he thought America was and one of the great things he did was he hired Rock Hudson, who was pretending to be this straight leading man with all these lovely leading ladies. And he made a series of movies with Rock Hudson that not only explored and cynically uh, analyzed and took apart the world of American melodrama, straight soap opera, and love stories, but it did it in a way where it worked on many levels. It worked on levels that Douglas Sirk was sifting through in his German-raised mind and how he sifted uh, what it was like from his point of view as an outsider to see what Americans loved in the melodramatic world that we lived in full of great colors and happy kids and wonderful straight families and make it darker and make it satirical and make it but make it just as emotional and then to bring an actor who clearly was hiding his sexuality from the world and have him work within this very you know a, a gay uh, moderated world uh, it worked his movies work on millions of levels so 
very quickly, after you watch this movie, I think you're going to be, if you're not familiar with Douglas Sirk, the director, you need to watch his movies. And I'm just going to fly through a bunch of his films. He's made some of the best movies of all time. Um, in the 50s, I don't know if there was a more interesting director than Douglas Sirk. Uh, certainly nobody was making melodramas and, uh, and dramas uh, uh, better than Douglas Sirk in the 50s. Nobody made these kind of movies better than him. They, nobody made more powerful movies. They were emotional. They were uh, satirical. They were about something. They really looked at American life and chopped it up and, 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 and analyzed it and really satirized it in a way that no other filmmaker ever did. And on top of it, like they are like very critical of, uh, of the American dream, but on top of that, they're also beautiful, visually stunning, and really emotional. And somehow, Douglas Sirk was able to not only tear apart the stereotypes of American dreams and straight families and straight romances, but he also made them very emotional and very effective. The movies that he made in the 50s, the Douglas Sirk all of melodramas of the 50s, are nothing even comes close. They're without, they're without peer. So here's a few of them. He made eight films with official films. He actually made nine. One of them he took his name off. Douglas Sirk took his name off of. But he made eight movies with Rock Hudson, and they are among the eight greatest performances in best movies that Rock Hudson has ever done, and also examining his life without letting everybody know he was examining his closeted life. So here are just a bunch of titles that you should check out that Douglas Sirk directed, and I'll let you know which ones. Uh, I'll, well, I'll go through the, 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 the Rock Hudson ones first. Uh, Piper Laurie and Rock Hudson appeared in a bunch of movies together. They actually uh, have... Uh, audio of her talking about it in the documentary. The first movie he ever made with Douglas Sirk was called Has Anybody Seen My Gal from 1952. Innocuous little romantic comedy, and uh, Douglas Sirk hired him. And at that time, uh, uh, Douglas Sirk was doing like work for studios where he was just kind of doing generic, wacky, romantic, uh, you know, very surfacey comedies. So he hired Rock Hudson, loved working with him, knew his story, and then thought, I'm going to work with this guy some more and examine. America through this closeted gay actor, and they began a partnership that uh, that would end up with eight classic, amazing, amazing masterpiece films. Uh, the other ones that he did, uh, Teza, the, the son of Cochise, uh, where he played an Indian, that was with Barbara Rush, and that was in 3D, um, and that was when they wanted Rock Hudson to be as straight as possible, where it was like, okay, look, we've got to make him more macho, this guy's clearly gay, we got to make him more macho, and he actually had to take lessons on how to deepen his voice and appear more masculine and have better posture and you know work out more. So he was sure. So he played an Indian in this Son of Cochise movie. It's a terrible movie, but Douglas Sirk put him in it, and then they worked together after that. And then the stretch begins: the stretch of incredible melodrama movies of the fifties with incredible performances and remarkable scripts and incredibly powerfully emotional direction by Douglas Sirk. Magnificent obsession. One of the greatest films of the 50s with Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman, Barbara Rush, Agnes Moorhead uh, from 1954. Incredible. Captain Lightfoot with Barbara Rush again and Rock Hudson. That was made in 1955. And by the way, um, this was back in the day, like in the 50s, when a director or an actor would make five movies a year. It wasn't unheard of that an actor would appear in five to six movies a year. That's why sometimes you look at credits on IMDb and some actors and actresses have like 400 titles. Well, because back in the 40s and 30s and 50s, you were making two, three, four, five, six movies a year and directors were doing three, four movies a year. So it's not uncommon that you would see a lot of it. So Captain Lightfoot, uh, All That Heaven Allows, uh, like Magnificent Obsession, um, really broke through uh, and is a, it is a classic melodrama, which, of course, the title of this documentary I'm talking about is a variation on. All That Heaven Allows was 1955. It's Rock Hudson, and Jane Wyman. Again, Agnes Moorhead is in that. Jane Wyman, it's the second time he worked with her. Uh, great stuff. Um, Written on the Wind, which is my personal favorite, Written on the Wind is a, a remarkable movie with Rock Hudson from 1956. Again, uh, Douglas Sirk, Barbara Stanwyck. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Lauren Bacall, Robert Stack, Dorothy Malone. Uh, a film about alcoholism, about uh, crushed relationships. Again, these movies are very over-the-top and melodramatic. Just know that going in. Stylistically, melodrama in the 50s was big. It was in your face. It was bold. It was over-the-top. The acting was big and in your face. And magnificent. Those are the kind of melodramas that I love. I love them. There's nothing subtle about them. It's over the top and big, and the colors are bright and vivid, and the acting is right in your face, and the emotions are massive. They're on a scale of 1 to 10. They're at 50. So these are huge, big melodramas, and I love them. Uh, Written on the Wind is my favorite, with Rock Hudson, Lauren Bacall, Robert Stack, Dorothy Malone, 1956. 
There is Battle Hymn, which is 1957. Uh, and then Tarnished Angels was the last movie uh, that he made with Rock Hudson. And that was with Robert Stack and Dorothy Malone. And another terrific movie. So the eight movies that Rock Hudson did with the great Douglas Sirk, who, again, examined America and examined American melodrama really creatively and over the top and so stylized. Um, uh, David Lynch, by the way, uh, loves Douglas Sirk movies. So does uh, Quentin Tarantino. And you can see that overreaching melodramatic quality in the movies of those directors, especially David Lynch. David Lynch was really influenced by the -the over-the-top, colorful melodrama of those films. But the ones without Rock Hudson are also amazing. Imitation of Life is one of the greatest movies ever made. That was his final feature. He made some shorts after that. But that was Lana Turner, John Gavin, Sandra Dee, Juanita Moore, a film about race. In 1959, he made a great melodrama about race. Um, and, and at a time when nobody was doing that kind of stuff. And he handled it in that great Douglas Sirk power. Uh, so you got Imitation of Life. You've got A Time to Love and A Time to Die with John Gavin from 1958. Interlude with June Allison and Rosanna Brazzi from 1957. There's Always uh, Tomorrow with Barbara Stanwyck, Fred McMurray, and Joan Bennett from 1956. All That I Desire with Barbara Stanwyck. Um, uh, Take Me to the Town, Meet Me at the Fair, 1953. No Room for the Groom in 1952, the early stuff. But I'm telling you, stuff like Imitation of Life is one of the greatest movies ever made. A Time to Live and A Time to Die. Tarnished Angels, Interlude, Battle Hem, Written on the Wind, There's Always Tomorrow, All That Heaven Allows, Captain Lightfoot, Magnificent Obsession. These are some of the greatest films of the 50s, directed by the great, the brilliant, the amazing Douglas Sirk, one of the most important voices in the history of cinema. And the work that he did with Rock Hudson is legendary and impactful and important. And the work that he did outside of that, stuff like, like uh, Imitation of Life, and, and um, I mean, so many amazing movies. So if you're not familiar with Douglas Sirk's work, if you watch this documentary, this Rock Hudson documentary, and you're like, wow, I'd like to watch some of the Douglas Sirk stuff, you can't go wrong. There's about, he, he's made, I think, 50-something movies, and for a stretch there in the 50s, about 12 or 13 of these great movies that have never been equaled. So, after you watch the uh, Rock Hudson documentary on Max and on HBO, watch some Douglas Sirk. Do yourself a favor and watch the amazing films of Douglas Sirk. Also, another movie that gets... A lot of airtime in this documentary is my, my favorite Rock Hudson performance uh, and one of my favorite Rock Hudson movies outside of the amazing Douglas Sirk stuff. And this is John Frankenheimer's thriller from 1966 called Seconds, which is an incredible movie. And again, John Frankenheimer, one of the greatest directors of all time, I think sadly underrated. I mean, he directed The Manchurian Candidate and a bunch of other movies. In the 80s, he had a resurgence of popularity thanks to the canon Menachem Golan and Globus film group. They, he did a bunch of stuff, including 52 Pickup. And Frankenheimer is one of those guys who you go back and look at his TV work and his movies. He's one of the most underrated and important American directors of all time. And his movie, Seconds with Rock Hudson, is astonishing. It's scary as fuck. It's a psychological horror movie where uh, John, uh, John Randolph plays this banker who is dissatisfied with his life, and he hears about this agency called The Company where you can go in and you can change your identity completely. They will change you by plastic surgery, change everything about you, put you someplace. So if you've had a horrible life and this guy needs to get out of his life right now, some shit's happened in his life as a banker and he wants to completely change his life. So he does so. And after the surgery, Rock Hudson takes over the role. And Rock Hudson plays the surgically altered banker who now is trying to lead a regular life, but this agency comes after him because he's breaking the rules. And it's insane, and it's surreal, and it's scary. It's a psychological horror movie about identity. It's about knowing who you are and what's behind your face, who you really are, the life you want to live, what you're forced to be living, the oppressive agency who's coming at you. All of this stuff is exactly happening in Rock Hudson's life because as a closeted gay man by this point in 1966, he was romantic lead guy. He was doing all the the romantic comedies with Doris Day, the pillow talk and all that stupid innocuous wacky shit where he was pretending to be gay in movies and all that stuff. So at the time when he was doing all these Doris Day, light as a feather, really dumb um, uh, romantic comedies, just, just like really goofy little Doris Day comedies, Along comes this movie, Seconds, where he dives deep into a movie about identity, about pressure from, you know, oppressive uh, agencies, and about living a lie and living a life that you shouldn't live. 
Um, and that's what the movie's about, and that's what was happening in Rock Hudson's life at the time. It's a fascinating movie to watch. Not only is it a great thriller and scary as shit, and beautiful in that great, intense John Frankenheimer way, with a great performance by Rock Hudson, a performance that people freaked out. Everybody hated it when it came out. When it opened in 1966, again, this was like Doris Day pillow talk romantic comedy Rock Hudson, and here's this black and white movie, shot in black and white, no Technicolor, no happy little bubbles in Technicolor, no Doris Day, oh, look at how red her dress is and how pink his hat is. This was strict black and white, intense, in-your-face, terrifying psychological horror. And people were like, what the fuck is this? Is that Rock Hudson? What is he doing in this crazy-ass movie with, you know, crazy plastic surgery and people from an agency coming after him and weird, crazy camera angles and intense lenses used and editing that fucked you up? It was like a surreal, terrifying horror movie with the guy from Pillow Talk in the middle of it. And it also is a great examination of identity and living under oppression, which is what Rock Hudson was doing in real life at that time. So, uh, the document, so Seconds by John Frankenheimer, 1966. Again, people hated it when it came out. It bombed. It wasn't a Rock Hudson movie. He took a huge hit on it and had to make a bunch of stupid romantic comedies after that to get, you know, hit back. And then in the 70s when he started doing TV and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, it's a fascinating career. But those movies are the ones that you should check out if you're not familiar with them, if you're familiar with Rock Hudson in other ways, uh, after you watch this documentary. So the documentary, All That Heaven Allowed, is now on uh, HBO, streaming on Max. Highly recommended, a fascinating documentary, beautifully done, really insightful, and very entertaining. Uh, and a great lesson about Hollywood at a specific time um, and how the closeted were treated and are still treated uh, to this day. And also uh, a great... Opening the door, if you're not familiar with, this is a great way to start jumping into the work of the amazing director, Douglas Sirk, and the film that John Frankenheimer directed that got shat on by everybody when it came out in 1966, Seconds. So, watch the Douglas Sirk movies and watch Seconds uh, if you want to see some shit that Rock Hudson did that examines the life that he was living and are also examples of some of the best movies to come out of Hollywood. So there you go. Anyway, uh, Rock Hudson documentary. Highly recommended. Make sure you check it out. Uh, and 